In Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, Indy starts the movie surviving a nuclear explosion by hiding inside a refrigerator. And he's fine. The audience is then expected to fear for Indy's safety later when he's in an ordinary fistfight. Or chase. Or... I, I don't even know. Two days after this movie's release, the phrase nuking the fridge first appeared on an IMDb message board, and I think it describes a really important story concept about violence and stakes. Hi, I'm Jonathan Stokes, and this is Raising the Stakes, videos about story. Let's get into it. Some fictional characters are basically invincible. I've read every Jack Reacher book, and I love them, but he's never once lost a fight. Once Jack Reacher beats up five guys in five seconds, are we truly worried about him? While Jet Li is essentially an invulnerable superhero in his movies, we see Jackie Chan get hurt all the time. So I'm never really that concerned for a Jet Li character's safety, but I'm always worried about Jackie. He chooses to appear as human as the rest of us, so I'm invested. In real life, fighting has major consequences. I loved season one of Cobra Kai, but in season two, you've got public assault in a car dealership with no criminal charges, a brawl where none of these 50 year old men get injured. You've got a fight in a mall with no civil suits. You got kids getting knocked unconscious with no concussion syndrome. You've got a home invasion and assault with no repercussions. You've got a riot on the first day of school. I mean, I never thought I'd see a karate TV show that has too much karate. All of this violence without consequence just undermines the reality and therefore the stakes of the story. Let's contrast this with a famously violent movie, The Godfather. Ouch. Michael Corleone, one of the toughest gangsters in cinematic history, is knocked out with a single punch. His jaw broken, Michael then spends the next year in Italy dabbing his nose with a handkerchief because of the damage to his sinuses. This level of consequence makes the movie's violence feel real and high stakes. I mean, this hurts. And this is just horrifying. Compare this with movies where characters trade punches for five minutes straight. According to the Wall Street Journal, both Vin Diesel and The Rock have it declared in their contracts that their characters can't receive more punches than they dole out. This explains why The Rock, who outweighs Vin Diesel by at least 50 pounds of muscle, can only fight him to kind of a draw in Fast Five. This is enough to break suture, and a pretty good way to nuke the fridge. <laughs> Quick disclaimer, the Fast and Furious movies are a ton of fun and I would love to write one. The Rock and Vin Diesel know what these movies are, and they do keep them to a somewhat low kill count. Which brings me to my next point. See, I think a protagonist's believability is inversely proportional to their kill count. The more people your hero kills, the less the audience believes the movie. Consider how vulnerable John Rambo is in the first Rambo movie, where he only kills one person, versus Rambo 4, where he kills 254. The more people Rambo kills, the worse his Rotten Tomato score. Meanwhile, Christopher Nolan's Batman trilogy is critically acclaimed, and his Batman has a shockingly low kill count. The internet may dispute me here, but if you only include clear on-screen deaths, Batman kills one person in Batman Begins, one person in Dark Knight, and one person in Dark Knight Rises. Maybe two if you include Talia al Ghul's Driver. The same is surprisingly true of Jason Bourne, who only kills when he absolutely has no choice. Turns out the 80s lied to us. You can have a great action movie without turning your hero into a murderous psychopath. I'm not saying don't have violence in your movie. I'm just saying treat it realistically. The more truthfully it's portrayed, 
the more your audience will invest in your characters. Anything less? And you're nuking the fridge. Whoa. 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 